So today we are working on a 2004 Subaru Outback base model. These uh, methods apply to the 2000 and 2004. Similarities between the 2005 and 2009 Outbacks as well, including the Forester. So what we're doing is we're replacing the strut tower in all um, with some aftermarket strut towers that have been uh, modified with Baja springs for a slight uh, increase in spring stiffness which gives a little lift as well as makes it easier to hold a heavier load in the back of the vehicle. Um, so what we got here <coughs> is the spring itself on its strut. You can see we've got the wheel off. We are on the passenger side. So um, past getting your strut set up to be installed, the new one, or if you're going to be using components from this you would do this first, but if you're not um, you can buy a complete strut kit all built together buy yourself some Baja springs and then take apart the strut kit, put on the Baja springs and put it back together. So I've already done that and I'm ready to rock and roll and get this finished. This is strut number four of four. So this is my last one I'm doing. And down here at the bottom of the strut we've got our single uh, bolt that bolts the bottom of the strut to the frame. And here's the nut that came off of it. It's a 19 millimeter. Um, this was definitely the challenge on the other side. Uh, it took a lot of work to get it off, and then it took even more work to get the bolt to come out of the guide hole inside of the knuckle. So what I opted to do on this side, um, as I was still working on this side, was to soak this down thoroughly, thoroughly with a mix of WD-40 penetrating lube and PB blaster. I find that combining the two seems to um, reduce uh, corrosion connection between materials rather than using one or the other and I know that these uh, aren't the best corrosion removers um, there are other ones out there if you've got your own little mix that makes it easier I'd suggest using that as these are most likely going to be extremely seized and stuck um, on top of that after getting my mix on there and letting it sit I also used a propane blowtorch to heat up the stud and assist in trying to break free some of that corrosion. And on this side it worked extremely well. I got this loose in about two minutes. The other side it took probably about two hours of pounding on it with a heavy-duty impact wrench, electric. If you use air that's fine too. Um, I pounded on it with that, pounded on it with uh, a sledgehammer to try and remove it. Uh, and eventually it did come free and completely destroyed the bolt in the process. So what I ended up having to do is buy a new bolt, washer, and nut to go onto the new strut. So once you get that out, um, the strut is going to spring a little bit. There's just a little bit of force left, maybe about a half inch or so at the bottom of the suspension when it's fully extended. Uh, once that comes free, you're going to go up into the cab in the cargo section. And back under the rear carpet mat, you can put the seats down. There are going to be those two studs right there that are 12 millimeters, I believe. No, they're I think they're 14s. 12 or 14 millimeters. You take those out and your strut's going to drop down. I suggest having someone help you to catch the strut when you undo it so it doesn't uh, drop onto the ground. Or specifically doesn't drop into your suspension and possibly pull on any of these hoses or cables you got back here. <clears throat> on the other side I actually go through the process of disassembling the upper control arm link to the knuckle. Um, my rear sway bar is already blown so I didn't have to undo that. These are things that are being replaced as well. <clears throat> I also had to undo my caliper to get off my um, rotor so I get some more access around the dust guard without smacking up my rotor. I also undid the uh, lower um, control arms, both this one and this one here. So basically the knuckle was free to rotate completely. And I may have to do that on this side because the issue I found was the new struts are just slightly taller as they're brand new than these already worn down loaded struts. So I had to release a lot of that to get the knuckle to sink low enough to hook up that bottom bolt again. Um, I do suggest Subaru Genuine Struts. I went aftermarket with a company that uh, um, was a bit on the cheaper side, not extremely cheap, but a little cheaper than Subaru Genuines. 
Um, but I did go Subaru Genuine Baja Springs, um, direct from Subaru. Uh, it was about $200 in springs for two, fr two fronts and two rears. Uh, my strut kits cost me 250 for all four struts pre-assembled. The reason I did that, rather than replacing all this stuff, is adding up all the parts together separately started becoming about the same cost as just buying the entire strut together. So I got all new bushings, all new, um, all new strut, all new spring, all together. And that's about it for taking this apart. Um, and then it'll just be the reverse going back in. Anything you undo, put it back together in basically the same order. Make sure you note which way your bolts go on these. As a general note, they all go uh, bolt head to the front, nut to the rear. Um, and uh, it'll be a little bit of a lift and a little bit more stiffness for the heavy loads I put on this car.